Hey now folks, my name is Nick, this is Board Game Brawl, and you are watching my Top 10 Games of Essence Spiel 2013. So a couple things I want to point out first off. First off, I did not expect to do another Top 10 list so soon, but I forgot just how fast that Essence Spiel was creeping up on us, and I wanted to rush to get this out at least a week ahead of time. The other thing is that all the information, or most of the information that you're going to see from here on out in the rest of this video, comes from a very, very excellent, well put together geek list on BoardGameGeek.com, uh, done by Eric Martin, who's kind of like their news correspondent there. He does a really great blog every day too. But basically, both for SN and for Gen Con, I think he does it for Origins too. He put together this awesome list of every publisher that's going to be at the fair, along with every game they're planning on, that those publishers are planning on demoing, selling. Uh, just previewing and showing off. I mean, it's just a really, really comprehensive list. Really great source font of information. So I'm going to put a link to it somewhere floating around here and underneath this video. So I urge you to go and check it out because I can't cover every single game in this list. I can't even cover every game that I was interested in. And there's tons of other ones that I didn't really have an interest in, but maybe you do. So go and find a game that you are sure to fall in love with someday when it's released in your uh, state country of origin. Uh, I urge you to check it out. Great list. Yada, yada, yada. So uh, another thing I want to point out is that I named this list the top 10 games of Essen, but obviously I'm not going to Essen. By the time of recording this video, Essen has not even happened yet. So, and I haven't played any of these games, but these are the games that I think just look really, really cool. I've seen pictures. I've seen the components. I've seen run-throughs of the gameplay, descriptions. I've seen commentary from people that have actually played prototypes of all these games or the full version of these games in some instances. And these are the games that just got me really, really excited. So definitely just, so take anything I say with a grain of salt because I haven't played them, but still I think these are games to watch out for. So I guess before I go any further as well, I should explain what Essen Spiel is for people that don't really know. So Essen, most people just call it Essen. Uh, Essen is this Im immense, huge game convention that occurs in Germany every year. Uh, it's definitely the world's biggest gaming convention as far as the amount of publishers and the amount of games that get shown off. There was some debate this year because Gen Con has actually become really, really huge. And there's some people think that actually the attendance for Gen Con was much bigger, but I, I don't know, I really don't care, but I think that the the amount of public, at least judging off the geek list that Eric Martin put up, the amount of publishers and games that were at, at, at Essen just is a really, really long and huge compared to Gen Con. But anyways, it's just the, uh, the huge gaming convention and it's a place for publishers to show off their new games for the year, uh, to preview games coming up in the upcoming year. I mean, uh, just a lot going on at this fair and you got to remember that in Germany, uh, in, in Europe as a whole, board gaming is much, much bigger than it is here. It's getting to be really huge here. We're definitely in the golden age of board gaming in the U.S., but still nothing like Europe. So that uh, is definitely a reason why the fair is so big. And you know, but American companies go there too. I know Plaid Hat's going to be there uh, with showing off the Bioshock, and you know, it's uh, Stronghold Games is going to be there. So it's a worldwide event. Everyone in the board gaming community and industry pays attention to it as well. They should, and uh, lots and lots of cool stuff gets shown off there for the first time. So. We're gonna to get to my actual list in a minute, but you know, normally, or I shouldn't say normally, because I've only done one other top ten list, but I would do a little runners-up category in my my eleven through fifteen. Be to be honest, uh, I, I was really expecting before I really sat down to peruse what games were coming out at Essen, I was expecting to not find much I was interested in because I mean, look, if you watch any of my videos, you know that I'm a big Ameritrash lover and. Essen being where it is and being uh, with the history that it has, most of the games that are coming out there are Euro games with, you know, which have all the same kind of Euro tendencies that are really 50-50 for me. There's some Euro games I really like and there's a lot that I just do, don't like or just don't have any interest in trying at all. Uh, but I was really surprised. I thought I would have a much harder time putting together a list than I did for the Gen Con video. I had at least 25 great choices to put on this list. I had to pare it down to make some really tough calls. Um, enough that I really wanted to do like a, a bottom 10 of my, my 11 through 20 uh, just to talk about them. But I, res you know, I held off on that because really I want to just show 10 games, 10 new games that I really think look cool. And in keeping with that, there were a bunch of expansions that are going to be either sold or just demoed or prototyped at the convention this year that I thought were worthy of mention, but didn't really deserve 
uh, status on the list because they're not new full games, but I just wanted to mention them anyway, rapid fire. So here we go. Asmodee is going to be demoing, prototyping, uh, just showing off for 2014 two new expansions of two of my favorite games. One is Seasons Path of Destiny, the newest expansion for Seasons. The other one is the fourth expansion for Dixit, Dixit 4, or it's, I think it's going to be called Dixit Origins when it finally comes out in the U.S. Uh, both of those are fantastic games. I'm sure that these two expansions don't add anything revolutionary to the games, but more is better for these two games as far as I'm concerned. Seasons is an awesome card drafting strategic uh, game of wizardry. It's kind of abstract, but it's got gorgeous artwork, which I love. Seasons is my favorite game as of right now. And uh, Dixit is an awesome creative party game where you're trying to look at art and give clues, but not but vague clues and trying to have people guess them. Yeah, it's a whole thing, but it's a really great game. And this new expansion has a new artist and she's really great. I'm only, I actually, I'm just assuming it's a woman. I don't know. Uh, I think it was, I think I read an article, but Whoever the artist is, really, really great job on what I've seen so far. So excited about those two expansions. Now, Portal Games is coming out with the newest expansion for, or maybe it's the first big expansion for Robinson Crusoe. It's called Voyage of the Beagle, which I'm sure has to do with uh, Darwin's famous ship, the Beagle. But uh, it's a new series of scenarios. It's got new components, new stuff to it. The box itself looks really, really cool. It looks like an old book. Um, Really excited for it. I don't know if I'm in a rush to get this one just because I'm um, having such a hard time getting through the very brutally tough scenarios in the base game, and I want to finish all those first. Uh, but nevertheless, Robinson Crusoe is a wonderful game, and any new stuff coming out for that is very, very welcome. It's uh, If you don't know about Robinson Crusoe, very, very hard, very thematic, uh, very involved cooperative game. If that sounds like your kind of thing, you should definitely check it out. Now, speaking of uh, more expansions for games that I like, uh, there's C3K, which uh, is Creatures, Cyclades, Comet, or yeah, something like that. Uh, I'm missing a C in there somewhere. But anyways, this is a little expansion for, uh, in the box is expansions for both Cyclades and Comet, which are two games from Madagot Games. Uh, Cyclades is, eh, I've played it once, I was not too keen on it. Fantastic components, I wasn't really keen on the gameplay. But Comet, Comet is on my shelf behind me, and for good reason, I love that game. That has fantastic components and fantastic gameplay. And basically what this expansion is letting you do is take creatures from Cyclades and put them in Comet, and creatures from Comet and put them in Cyclades. Really, really cool idea. I'm glad that they're having a lot of like cross-pollination there. I'm sure some people are going to be annoyed having to buy stuff for a game that they don't own. Uh, I mean, I don't own Cyclades, and I'm not really interested in it, but hey, it's a cool mini, why not? Cool mini or not. Anyways, uh, I'm really excited for that C3K. So uh, there's another expansion coming out for Yido, a little small expansion called Sokoku, which basically lets you uh, give you another event card that's going to burn down the church. Because Yido was not mean enough already. <laughs> I really enjoy Yido. I have it on the shelf behind me too. It's But it's a brutally... It, that game hates the players. It hates Every player wants them all to lose, even though it's not a cooperative game. Uh, but I would love to get a hold of that little expansion. I hope they release it over here domestically. That's from Pandasaurus Games, by the way. There is the first expansion, or the first official expansion, for Legends of Andor. Uh, I think the translation of it is Search for the Star Shield. Uh, basically, just new scenarios for Legends of Andor. It's a really great cooperative game that is... Uh, mission or quest driven you have these different quests you're going to go through each time they had done a little downloadable expansion for the game before but this is the first real ex expansion with new components new maps and stuff like that so uh legend of Andor is a great game the people the complaint people have about it is that you burn through those missions really quickly and then you need more variety this should be an answer to those pleas so let's end with a bunch of stuff from Antoine Bauza, who is probably my favorite designer at the moment. There's a deluxe version of Hanabi being released. And, you know, well, I would have said that a deluxe version of Takanoko was probably unnecessary until I got it, and it's fantastic. I definitely would have said a deluxe version of Hanabi was unnecessary, uh, especially since this one makes the cards into tiles. And as you put them on little like Scrabble racks that you can't see so the other players can see them. I don't know. 
but it looks great. <laughs> so I probably want it. And I hope this isn't the trend of having all of his games put out collector's editions, because that would be a disaster. Oh no, wait a minute. A collector's edition of Ghost Stories and Tokaido. Okay, that would be incredible, and it would make my poor wallet, which is already weeping, completely die altogether, because I would definitely get them. So, anyways, that's uh, the Hanabi Deluxe from, uh, I think it's from R&R Games is the European distributor. Uh, or no, R&R Games is the American distributor. Uh, Abacus Spiel, I think, is the European distributor. I'm sorry if I got that wrong. Uh, a couple more things from Antoine Baza while we're on the topic. Tokaido Crossroads, a new expansion for Tokaido, which adds more to that game, which the game desperately needs. I really like Tokaido. It's a light, breezy game, but there's not a lot of complexity to it, so hopefully this adds a little bit more. And finally, this is not a game expansion. This is not going to improve the game at all, but there is a new Takenoko figurine of the panda that, well, I'll have the picture up, and I want it! I just want it! It's nothing to do with the game, but I just want it, and maybe I can use it in the collector's edition, uh, even though it looks like the base is too big, but I don't care, because that thing looks cool, and I want it, and I love Takenoko. Anyways, enough of that. Without further ado, I've kept you dragged on, dragging this on long, far too long. Let's get to my top 10 games of Essence Spiel 2013. All right, clocking in at number 10, we have Stories with an exclamation mark. This is designed by Thomas Odenhoven and published by Schmidt Spiel. Now, I've had a rocky relationship with storytelling games. I really, really want to love storytelling games, but I had a bad experience with Agents of Smirsh. I had a really bad experience with Story War, but this one might be the one. This looks like a really interesting game. I think it's more supposed to be a family-oriented game, but it looks really cool. Basically, uh, it's competitive. You're going to have to tell a story to the other players. The other players are going to have uh, different basically like objectives or cards that are going to tell you what they expect to hear in your story and you had better do it well. And uh, aside from that, it just looks like it has much more structure. There's actually a scoring track to the game, a way to actually, you know, determine who wins, which Story War didn't have. Uh, so I, I want this game to redeem story-based storytelling games in my eyes. It looks really, really neat. I don't hear a lot of people talking about it, so I want to be one of the first reviewers to talk about it. This is Stories with an exclamation mark, uh, my number 10. My number nine is Origin, designed by Andrea Manini and published by Madagot Games. And if you haven't gotten this impression from me yet, let me just spell it out for you. I think that Madagot Games is an amazing company. Everything that they've done has been at least okay, but usually fantastic. I really think it's a company to look out for. And Origin looks like it's not gonna be any exception to that. So basically in this game, you are, each, each player is competitive, you're controlling different tribes, uh, and like primeval earth who are starting out in uh, Africa and spreading out and basically the components of this game just look amazing each of your uh, little player pawns come in different sizes and shades and look like little wooden or stone figurines just really really cool really beautiful artwork on the box and all the cards and board uh, I you know this looks like the type of Euro game I can really get behind because it looks like it has a very interesting theme and very very beautiful to look at so that's Origin from Madagot Games should be on your radar. At number eight we have Lewis and Clark published by Ludonaut and designed by Cedric Chaubuzitz. Excuse me if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. But in Lewis and Clark, as the name suggests, each player is taking control of a different expeditionary force who is trying to uh, lead an expedition uh, across North America all the way to reach the Pacific and be the first one to do that and earn the most points, of course. And you're going to do that by having, you're actually going to have a hand of cards with uh, different types of adventuring party members. And uh, it has like a really interesting card mechanic where you can use one card, but only if you use it in conjunction with another card, which is going to be unavailable to you afterwards. So you have to decide which card is more important to you to keep in your hand or to sacrifice at any given moment. They're calling it a hand building game because you can enlarge your hand with new characters, but it's gonna keep you from getting other cards that might be more important to you back into your hand. But aside from all that, the game also looks really, really nice. Uh, really beautiful board, beautiful artwork on all the stuff and the box. And it's actually gonna be available as a pre-order from Game Salute very, very soon. One of the few games that you know you can definitely get in the US very quickly. 
But again, much like what I said with Origin, this looks like the kind of Euro style game that I can get behind. I would actually go so far as to say this is one of the new breed of games that's mixing uh, Euro uh, sort of uh, Euro game tendencies with uh, Ameritrash tendencies into something that mixes both the best of both worlds. So, or at least I really hope so, because this game looks really, really cool. That's Lewis and Clark from Ludonauts. Caverna the Cave Farmers is my number seven, designed by Uwe Rosenberg and published by Lookout Games. Now, Uwe Rosenberg is like a household name amongst board gamers at this point. He's done Agricola, he did La Havre, uh, many, many others. But uh, this, is, this game is sort of a pseudo sequel to Agricola, whereas instead of just being uh, a family trying to survive on a farm, as the Secret Cabal guys dubbed it, Misery Farm, uh, you're in Misery Cave instead, except that this, uh, the Caverna actually seems like more of a fantasy world. You're actually a family of dwarves living in a cave, and instead of just farming, you can actually uh, build stuff, and you can go out and go on quests in order to uh, and go to go hunting. Uh, it seems very odd compared to Agricola, but that's actually one of the reasons why I'm interested in it, because I only played Agricola once, and it was I thought it was okay. I need to play it again, for sure. And I actually did better than I thought I would, given what a you know difficult game it is and what a dense, heavy Euro that it is. Uh, but even so, even if I play it again and do a better job at it, I don't think it's got a theme that really appeals to me. It doesn't have much of a theme at all, as far as I'm concerned. But Caverna seems like it has a little more to it, a little more meat that I would actually like, given the type of games that I like. Uh, so I'm definitely excited for it. Again, I'm trying to get more and more into Euros, and I think that games like this and Lewis and Clark are my way to do it. That's Caverna, the Cave Farmers from Lookout Games. At number six, we have Legacy, the Testament of Duke de Crisi, uh, designed by Michael Justin Elliott Hendricks and published by Portal Games. This game seems really, really interesting. Basically, you're building a, you're comp it's a competitive game where you're building a family tree uh, back in like ancient Victorian times, or maybe even before Victorian times, but uh, complete with all the types of different scandals and bloodshed and uh mistresses and just seems really interesting very very thematic i've i had a chance to actually see it in action and i while i was playing a game off to the side and i just couldn't take my eyes away because it seemed like just so cool and so the kind of game that i would be interested in as far as theme even though it looks a little dark uh, and I'm not actually not usually into historic games, but it just seems like they went out of their way to make a unique sort of game with a different type of feel that I haven't seen in others. Uh, the gameplay looks solid, all the components look solid, the artwork I really like. Definitely something I am going to be looking out for. That's uh, Legacy, The Testament of Duke de Crecy from Portal Games. All right, I swear this is the last Madagod game I'm going to be talking about in this video, but uh, at my number five is Corto from Madagod Games, designed by Laurent Escoffier and Sebastian Pauchon. Now, in Corto, this is actually based off of a very old, very popular comic strip, I think in France. Uh, I don't have really any experience of, of it, but it, it seemed reminiscent of a more mature version of Tintin. I don't know, something like that. But... The game itself looks really, really cool. It's another storytelling game, and I, I've been burned, as I said before, I've been burned by storytelling games, but I keep coming back. Corto in particular looks really, really amazing. The board and everything about it, basically as you try to be the first person to uh, make the best story using all of these different characters from the books, uh, different really awesome looking artwork. They even made the instruction booklet look like a comic book. Uh, I don't know too much else about it, but it just seems like a really, really cool idea for a game. And again, it's from Madagot Games, so I'm going to give them a, uh, I'm not going to give them a pass, but I am going to give them the benefit of the doubt for any game that they put out because they have done such stellar work before. That's Corto from Madagot Games. <laughs> Now, my number four game of SN 2013 kind of came out of nowhere. I hadn't heard too much about it until I saw some news stories about it and saw a really awesome video that the publisher put up. But the game is CV. It's published by Heidelberger Spiel of Spielverlag. I, 
This is a very difficult top 10 list for me. <laughs> but it's also designed by Philippe Malunski. Uh, this game looks really, really super cool. Uh, so forgive my ignorance about how to pronounce the names because despite that, this game looks really cool. It's basically a life-building card and dice game. Each of the players is going to try to have the, the best and most fulfilling life by playing different cards which signify life events uh, in the players' lives and uh, new events come on top of old events, but the timeline could be, you know, old events can become more or less relevant, actually trying to simulate how things in your life get forgotten or passed up or uh, not given as much attention. And you're all the while you're rolling these dice, which have happy faces, smile, uh, frowny faces, basically signifying ill and good fortune that could be happening to you during the course of your life. I, you know, it seems a little ambitious. I, you know, this type of game, it's types of games like these are usually hit and miss as far as, you know, if it just looks great, but is really shallow, or if it has that combination of being a rather uh, misleadingly deep game, I think it looks super cool. I definitely want to give it a shot. I may even pre-order it. Uh, CV from Heidelberger Spiel Everlog. Why did I make myself say it again? Definitely one to look out for. It could be a sleeper hit. Okay, I know I'm probably gonna catch some flack for my number three, not just because it's so high, but possibly because it's even on this list at all. But it is Heart of Crown from Jap uh, published by Japan Brand and uh, from the designer Ginkgo, who I've never actually heard of before. But Japan Brand I have heard of before because they are basically the Japanese distributor of many, many smaller card games that I like a lot, including Love Letter, Lost Legacy, the Tonto Quarry series, at least it's a Japan release. Um, and I am a big fan of all of those games. And Heart of Crown is another deck builder game, sort of in the vein of Tonto Quarry, but it has more of a medieval fantasy feel where you're actually players competing to build up a kingdom and to please the different princesses. And I, I don't know, it just seems really, really cool. I love the anime manga style artwork. And yeah, I mean, it's definitely another Dominion clone with some twists like Tonto Quarry was, but I don't care. I don't think that's a knock because I think Dominion is a is a decent game. The game mechanic is solid, but it's a horrible game to look at and to experience because there's no theme to it whatsoever. So I love all these games like Tonto Kore and like this game uh, Heart of Crown, which are going to put a much better theme, much better artwork, in my opinion. Some people do not like it at all and just make it a more interesting game to me. I love deck building games. I can't wait to get my hands on this one. Heart of Crown from Japan Brand. All right, we are already down to number two of my top 10 SMSPL 2013 games. And that number two is Seven Swords from Gen X Games and designed by Oscar Aravalo. Now, I, if you saw my review of Say Bye to the Villains, you know that I love the theme of the, you know, Akira Kurosawa Seven Samurai type plot line of these uh, ragtag bunch of samurai teaming up against these bandits who are just destroying this poor peasant town. Love that theme. Seven Swords is basically the same type of theme with a little bit of a twist in that it's actually a two-player game. I would have thought just from the name alone that it was a cooperative game for sure, just like Save Out of the Villains, but no, it's a two-player game where one player takes control of all the bandits and the other player takes control of all of the samurai. And so it's more of a tactical game where you're one versus the other and uh, the way that the actions are dictated by both sides is uh, very different. So it's, it seems a bit asymmetrical to me if I was reading everything correctly, where the uh, bandits are going to be uh you have certain actions that they can do against the samurai the samurai have these little action chips that they can do depending on what chip they choose for the turn that's how many actions they get it seems way more involved than i would have thought but in a very cool way uh, some of the prototype components look really really cool i hope that uh stays even better or gets even better in the final version but i i love the theme i love the idea of it i love what i've heard about the gameplay and the mechanics Definitely something that I'm going to be looking out for. That's Seven Swords from Gen X Games. All right, we're down to my number one of top 10 games of Essen. And I'm sure I'm going to catch flack for this as well, because there are so many games coming out of Essen that are these, you know, elegant Euro games with 
you know, complex mechanisms and very interesting uh, historical themes and, you know, by very, very well-known, uh, distinguished designers and publishers. I'm not going for any of those <laughs> for my number one. For my number one, I'm going with Super Fantasy from Red Glove, a company called Red Glove, which has done a fantastic game called Ristorante Italia, which is on my shelf, and it's designed by Marco Valtriani. Now, Super Fantasy is a hack and slash dungeon crawling cooperative game. Now, I've got a bunch of those. I've got Super Dungeon Explorer, and I mean, if you, I guess you can call Legends of Andor that to a degree, and you can call Descent that, but Super Fantasy is hack and slash distilled down to its essence from everything I've seen. Uh, because even Super Dungeon Explorer, which I used to give that description to, is can be a very long uh, affair. And I love Super Dungeon Explorer, but it just it takes a while to play, and it's not as exciting viscerally. But Super Fantasy seems to be that gauntlet type game that everyone has who loves this genre, anyways, has been looking for. I love the artwork. At first, I was like, is that a little too cartoony? But the more I looked at it, the more I love it. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, I love the idea that you've got all these different characters. I love the fact that it's cooperative. Th again, this kind of came out of nowhere for me, just like CV did, because I didn't know about it until just a few weeks ago. But, man, I want this game. I want it now, now, now. Okay, I don't want to wait for no fair. I don't want to wait for no translation into English. I want it now. But, <laughs> so that's Super Fantasy, the ultimate hack and slash board game, I hope, from Red Glove, designed by Marco Valtriani. They do good work at Red Love, as far as I'm concerned, even just based off the one game of theirs that I have, so I hope they keep it up. So, that was my top 10 list of Essen Spiel 2013 games. I hope you learned a little something. I hope you saw a game that interested you. Again, if you did not, you should go to Eric Martin's fantastic geek list. I'm going to put another link up there, somewhere around here. And underneath the video. Uh, all, his geek list detailing all the stuff coming out of Essen is very comprehensive. It's very awesome. You'll get lost. You'll fall down the rabbit hole looking at it and finding awesome games to, to be interested in. I don't even care if they're none of the games that I've talked about because I just want more and more people to get interested in board gaming. I want more and more people to support game companies and producing awesome board games and new and innovative board games because I have fallen in love with this hobby and I want to see it prosper. And I think that uh, even though it's become this monolithic entity, I think that Essence Spiel 2013 is ultimately the core of keeping uh, a lot of these games going and keeping the industry going. And I sure hope that it remains so along with Gen Con because I love doing these videos. I love talking about all these new games. I hope you do too. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for watching any of my videos. Please subscribe if you can. It means a lot to me. Just like every view means a lot to me. I hope that I can keep doing all these videos for a long time to come because I really enjoy it. I really love talking about my hobby. I love talking, as you can tell. And I hope that all of you have a good Essen, even if you're not there, just looking at all the new games, okay? So don't just look at videos. Don't just talk about games. Get out there and play games every day in and every way especially if they're awesome looking Euro games from Essen. Take care. <laughs>